If you're watching this video, you're probably between the ages of um, oh, 15 to 30. That's what the YouTube um, analytics say is my target audience. Guys between 15 and 30, actually 34 I think, but it doesn't matter. The point of the matter is that see, you who are watching this video, your life is probably shit. It's probably like really shitty. I mean, it sucks canal water probably. And uh, my life, my life is great. I'm 50 years old. Uh, and I'm loving middle age. I mean, I've got it all. I got money that I earned. I've got uh, no problem with women. I can get whatever woman I want. Um, I can travel here, I can travel there. I can do whatever I want, right? Uh, I wanna buy a car, I can buy one car or two cars or three cars or a motorcycle or whatever the fuck. Whatever toy that I want, I can get. Uh, whatever thing I wanna do or try out, I can do so. And your life on the contrary, pretty much sucks, right? Now, the fact of the matter is, see, I'm laughing at this because my life used to suck as badly as yours. My life, um, in many ways, probably sucked worse than yours, okay? Because every young man's life sucks, and there's a reason for it, a very good reason. Now, you see, you're 15, okay? You finish puberty, right? And, and you're, you're, you're finishing high school probably, and then you go to college, and then you start your life. And your life sucks because you don't have anything that society really wants. Now think about it. Uh, you don't have any skill. You're developing your skills, right? You don't have any experience because you're too young. You haven't lived long enough. You haven't done anything, right? And you don't have any money, right? Or, or at least money that you have earned. Now, of course, there are outliers. I don't know. Justin Bieber was a millionaire by 16, but he doesn't count because he's not the majority. The majority of people, the majority of young men, the majority of young men between the ages of 15, 25, 30, their life sucks because they have no skills. They have no experience that, that anybody would find valuable and they have no money. So they're big fat losers, right? Now, you look at some guys, some guys in that age range, and, and everybody you know, likes them, is nice to them, and all the rest of it. But you see, those guys that everybody views like that and that sort of like favors, it's not that they themselves have anything going for them. It's that they have the promise that in the years to come, they'll do something cool, something interesting, that they'll be worthwhile. You see? Think about it. See, for instance, um, where I live, near where I live, there's this hangout for rich kids, right? Now, the rich kids hang out there, and I pass them by sometimes, and you know, there's this kid, the arrogant kid, with a brand new Land Rover, right? What, you think the kid bought it with the money that he earned? No, he didn't. His daddy gave it to him, right? So he's arrogant and conceited, right? Uh, not because he has something that he earned, but because he was given something. And people flock to him because there's the promise that in the future he's going to inherit money and be somebody by virtue of inheriting this cash. Ditto with kids who are very smart. You've noticed, you know, really smart guys, right? And you say to yourself, maybe yeah, you're one of those smart guys, and you say, well, I'm so smart, I have something. Well, yeah, brains matter in the long run. But in the short run, when you're young, when you're between 15 and 30, uh, what, your brains mean absolutely nothing because you don't have any skills. You don't have any experience. You don't have any position. You don't have any money, okay? Being really smart, what it is, is a promise, a promise of the future. You don't have any value now, you see? Now, women, on the other hand, it's, it's completely the opposite. Women's value, their maximum value, is between the ages of 15 and 30. Why? Obvious, because it's their peak fertility. It's a period of their lives when they are most fertile. Healthy young woman between the ages of 15 and 30, she's the most attractive person in our society. You know, you look at um, Colgate commercials, you know, car ads, uh, who do they have? Do they have like a 16-year-old boy all pimply and gawky, gawky and, and just pathetic looking? No. They have some 20, 21-year-old hottie, peak fertility, smiling. She's the most valuable because she can have children. Because at the end of the day, you always have to remember that value 
comes from society, whether we like it or not. Sometimes it's grossly unfair. Sometimes society values things that are trivial. But the fact of the matter is that no man is an island unto his own. All right? And a man's value is dictated by his society, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's fair or not. And you can say to me that, oh, I, I'm, I'm a lone wolf, I'm not part of a society. Bullshit. Bullshit. You are a part of a society, whether you like it or not. And your value comes from your social worth, whether you like it or not. Money is merely an expression of that social worth. Okay? Never forget that. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is, see, you are least valuable between the ages of 15 and 30 to your society because you're disposable. See? Whereas a woman, between the ages of 15 and 30, her peak fertility, she's at her most valuable to society. And I can prove that in an instant. When a soldier, a young man, dies in a war, it's a tragedy. Oh, he was full of promise. That word again, promise. He was full of promise. Oh, and he died so young. Oh, it's so sad. But when a young woman, a 22, 25 year old lieutenant or whatever, dies in battle, it's a national tragedy because, because she could have a kid. You see? See, that's the difference. That's why it's so unfair, but that's life. Life is unfair by definition. If you don't like it, you know, just check out because it's not going to get any more fair. Okay? But the thing is, though, the situation turns around. I mean, when I was like 15, oh man, I was just a fucking nightmare of a loser. When I was 15, I was pathetic. When I was 20, pathetic. 25, pathetic. 30, slightly less pathetic. 35, I had my shit more or less together. I was making good bank. I knew how to handle girls, sort of. 40, 40, much better. Much better. 45. I had the shit in hand in 50. Well, this is just the frosting of the cake, right? That's the point I'm trying to make. You see, as you grow into your life, you will grow into your skills. You will learn skills and you will gain experience by the use of your skills in whatever you're doing. And naturally, by using your skills and growing into your experience, you'll start to earn money. You'll start to earn social position, okay? And it's just a natural step. But you have to understand that this time of your life, between the ages of 15 and 30, it's the worst time of your life. It, it's, it's, it, it's the worst, the nadir of your life. But the good thing is that, see, it's not going to get worse. It's only going to get better. Think of the tragedy of women. A 21-year-old woman who gets all that attention because she's fertile, because she's attractive. She gets all that attention, all that love and focus and this and that. Are you okay? Do you need this? Do you need that? And you know, she hits 40. She's invisible. Nobody gives a shit about her. Mm -hmm. And she's 50. She's like a black hole. Nobody wants to be around her. And if she tries to pretend like she's 21 when she's 50, when she's like a cougar, <laughs> everybody laughs at her. You know, she might get tossed a pity fuck or wind up with like, you know, the absolute dregs of the sexual marketplace, right? A 50-year-old guy, I can date whoever I want. Girls flock to me, I don't have to do anything, you know? One time, actually not that long ago, went to a um, real estate office, the secretary gave me her number, okay? And it was really funny because the exact same thing had happened to me a year earlier in a different real estate office, in a different city, in a different country. I don't know why, but it is, see? Well, no, I know why, and I've explained it to you, see? You always have to be careful, though. See, when you're a young guy and everybody thinks that you're wonderful, it's because they look at you, look at the promise that you hold for the future. And there are some guys who skate their entire life on that promise. Uh, look at Barack Obama, for instance. Barack Obama, all of his life, he has been uh, coddled and praised and all the rest of it for the promise of what he would do in the future, but which he actually never achieved. Look at his career. He was, uh, you know, the, the first black editor of the uh, Harvard uh, Law Review, right? Did he do anything? No. And actually, there are a lot of stories of former uh, Harvard Law School classmates. They talk about the obama -madir. Obamometer or something like that, they would say how, how, how he was so careful with his position. He was never, never, never like a vanguard of thinking or anything like that. He was always consensus driven and trying to be 
you know, as, as uh, uncontroversial as possible. He never expressed any of the promise. I mean, he never delivered, rather, on any of the promise that people thought that he would. And then later, as a, a state senator, a community activist, a U.S. senator, and then as president, he got the Nobel Prize basically for showing up. He hadn't done anything. And did he deliver on his promise of peace? Bullshit. He caused more wars, see? Obama is the ultimate example of the man of promise who never achieves anything. The young men, of your peers, that everybody loves, that everybody thinks is so wonderful that they're going to achieve great things, odds are pretty good that they're not going to accomplish anything. They might wind up in some high office, like Obama did, but they're not actually going to achieve anything. And the funny thing is that the guys who are, you know, sort of like the biggest losers in their teens and early 20s and mid 20s, the biggest losers, they're the ones who wind up making the biggest splash. It's weird. Okay, I'm not saying that if you're the biggest loser when you're young, automatically and as if by magic, you know, you're going to have a big splash when you're 50. No, you got to work your ass off. You want anything, anything in life, you have to work your ass off. You have to, you know, just elbow your way and just push people aside. It's unfortunate, but that's life. You know, it's a competition. See, all, all this, uh, you know, politesse we have and good manners and please and thank you and all that. That's just the disguise. At the end of the day, John Updike said it best. To be alive is to be a killer. Okay? Now, so, the point, to return, of why your life sucks now. Okay? Because right now you don't have anything. So, what is your goal in life as a young man? Okay? It's to ignore everything except the things that you have right now. Developing your skills, developing who you are, developing your capital, your personal capital, your emotional capital, all the various versions. I'm going to be talking about this in subsequent videos, so don't worry about it. You don't have to take notes yet. The point I'm trying to make is very simple. You see, now when you're young, when you're a loser, when your life is shit, when your life sucks canal water, right now, you know, you're 15, 20, 25, maybe even 30, you have to focus on the things that you can control the skills that you have, try to maximize your opportunities, work like a dog, because believe me, by the time you become an old fart like me, you're going to look back very fondly on those times when you were a loser. Not because it was fun, but because the distance traversed has been so great, and you're going to look back fondly at that loserish, loserish guy that you used to be and compare him to the man you are now. And that, that comparison, that distance that you traveled, that is what will make you truly happy.